Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and we are going to have a math lesson about percents in real life. Percent problems in real life. We'll talk about taxes, discounts, raises, and more. Let's get started. We will talk about percent increases and decreases, and I want to show you a shortcut that your teachers don't want you to know. Now, I realize you might say, hey, you're a teacher, but this is a shortcut I use all the time and is often not taught, so I wanted to make sure that that was um, available to you. It's a quick way to do these types of questions or to check your work both ways. Let's start off talking about addition problems or increase problems. When you see these words, you know that you're going to be doing an increase type problem. If you see something that's talking about an interest amount or it says increase, if it's talking about taxes, more, or a markup, like a markup on a vehicle, then these are words that tell you that you will be adding. Um, that may seem obvious, but it's definitely needed. So let's look at a question like that. A computer is marked up from last year's model by 12%. If the cost last year was $1,150, what is the cost of the new model? Oftentimes when you get a new model, it's marked up, like cars are marked up from the previous models, whatever. So the first step for solving this type of problem is listed on the board. Find the percent. That's what we need to do. So the way I write this out is I read through the question and try and narrow it down to three words. 12% of 1,150. If I can narrow it down to those three things, then I can solve this. 12% I will convert into a decimal. If you've never converted a percent to a decimal, basically you divide by 100. So percent to a decimal becomes 0.12. Of means multiplication and the last number stays the same. When I multiply 0 0.12 or 12 hundredths times 1150, I get 138. This is not my final answer. Some people will stop here. Don't stop here. This is 12% of 1150. That is not the new cost of the computer. That's just the amount it increased in price. So now I have to add it to the original amount. And this is where you would have to decide, am I adding, am I subtracting? And we look at the word marked up to know that we will be adding this 12% to the cost. So it'll look like this. My original cost plus the increased amount will give me my final answer. The new computer cost for the latest model, $1,288. Let's look at a quick question that tells us that you are going to subtract. We're going to be looking at subtraction questions. These are ones that talk about a decrease, a discount. If they say it is less, it is, if it is a depreciated value on like a vehicle or something like that, or if it is reduced. These words will tell us that we are subtracting when we look at a problem. Let's look at a word problem. I bought a t-shirt. The original price was $25. It was discounted by 15%. What is my new cost? I'm going to follow exactly the same steps as I did on the previous question. I'm going to boil down this word problem to three simple things. 15% of $25. My 15% becomes a decimal. My of becomes multiplication. 25 remains the same. That's what I need to do. Now I multiply 15 hundredths times 25. That gives me 375. Remember, that is not the new cost. That is the amount. That is the percent. That is 15% of 25 is $3.75. Now I have to ask myself, what am I doing with that $3.75? Because this is a discount, I will be subtracting from the original number. So I take the original amount, $25, I subtract $3.75, and I get my final new amount of $21.25. Now I have a practice question for you, where you will need to decide what to do and you might need to do a couple of different things. Here's my practice question. At my favorite calculator store, there was a sale of 10% off. I bought a $15 calculator. 
If I paid 6% sales tax, what is my total cost? There are going to be two steps for this one. It's a little bit tricky. But if you can solve this, you can do all of the types of questions like this. Pause the recording. Try it on your own. Welcome back. I'm going to show you how to do this. I'm going to start with the first step. First step is that there is a sale of 10% off. So I'm going to calculate 10% of $15. 10% of $15 reduces to a decimal of 0 0.10 times 15 gives me $1.50. So that means 10% of $15 is $1.50. Am I going to add or subtract with that? Well, it was a sale of 10% off, so that means I am going to subtract. I take my original amount, $15, I subtract that $1.50, and I'll get $13.50. That's what the calculator would cost after the discount. But I'm not yet finished. So if you got to this point, give yourselves a round of applause. That's fantastic. Now we're going to move on to the next step, and that is calculating the sales tax. I am going to find the percent. 6% of... $13.50. My tax on my new amount. The decimal for 6% looks like this, 0 0.06. Very important that you include that zero. 0 0.06 times my new amount, 1350, gives me that 81 cents or 0 0.81. That's my tax. So because it's my tax, am I going to add that or subtract it? Well, it's a tax amount, so I'm going to add it on there. So I have my 1350 plus my 81 cents and that gives me my new total of $14.31. That's after the discount of 10% and adding on 6% tax. So we did two steps with this one. A lot more complicated, same exact steps. So just keep those steps in mind and keep practicing them and you're going to get better at them. Now for the shortcut. This is the shortcut your teachers don't want you to know, but I bet you all of them use. Um, here's a sample question that will help me to show you this shortcut. There's a 12% sale on glue sticks. The original price was $3. What's the new cost? Now, you can calculate 12% of $3. Then subtract $3 minus that amount, and you'll get an answer. Or you can subtract first. Now, while this seems like the same number of steps, you're always subtracting with 100, so that makes it a little bit easier. So I'm going to subtract first. I take 100%, that's the total amount, and I am subtracting 12% because it's a sale of 12%. Leaves me with 88%. Now I calculate 88% of that $3, and I'll get my, my sale value right away. So if this seems to you like that's not much of a shortcut, maybe after practicing a little bit, you'll see how this does save a little bit of time, especially if you can use mental math to do the first step of subtracting the 100% minus 12% gives you that 88%. This is the way teachers will do it, I guarantee it. Um, when you become more comfortable with it, you'll probably find that this way is a little bit quicker. Let me show you this same shortcut using addition. And by the way, you can check this. You can calculate 12% of $3 and then say $3 minus that amount, and you will get $2.64. So you can double check back and forth this way. The shortcut when it's addition would look something like this. My collector's item toys uh, cost me $210. Now it's worth 28% more. How much is it worth? So this would be any increase problem. You can add first 100%, that's the total cost, plus the increased amount, giving you 128%. And then you can just calculate 128% of 210. Now this is where it does look a little bit tricky, because it is 1.28 times 210. But if you do that, you will get... $268.80. If you want to check that work, you can calculate 28% of 210 and then add that to 210 and you will get the same amount. But this is a shortcut that teachers use. It's a shortcut that might simplify your life. It's also a shortcut you can use to check your work 
on questions that ask for a percentage, increase or decrease like that. So quick recap, percent increase, we talked about percent decrease, and I showed you a shortcut that teachers use that may or may not be useful for you depending on how comfortable you are with percentages. I hope that that was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.